Hey everybody, it's that time again. In 2020, I beat 55 games total, so let's find out how many I beat this time. So starting off with January, it was Happy Home Designer for the 3DS. I liked it. I played it one time a couple years back. Didn't know about Happy Home Designer or about Animal Crossing at all in general. And I really didn't appreciate it. So I decided to give the game a second try. I went back, got it, played it, and I loved it. I really did love it now that I knew what it was. Sadly, it still has no replay value. You have to delete everything and start over again. So I wish that there was an option where you could go to another island or go to another place and do that. And I even see the new DLC still doesn't do that. So hopefully one day Nintendo will listen and go, you know what, maybe we shouldn't do something other than this. Next on the list is Super Mario Sunshine. This game made me rage. Certain levels, I said, what the hell? I'm kind of glad I didn't play it on the GameCube because the controller on the GameCube is, it always threw me off anyway. So even with a controller that I, I liked, I had a rock candy controller, it still was not great. <laughs> so it's a good game. I just wish that there were some levels where the camera would fix itself, but I did hear that they did a patch and they fixed the camera later on. So I wonder if I play it later, would it be better? Who knows? I, I, I'm not going to give it another try though. Don't want to find out and rage again. Next is Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I wanted to play this because I did hear about Hyrule Warriors. I did hear about the other one. I didn't like it as much as this one, but that's probably because it really wasn't a story based off of anything from really like Legend of Zelda or Link or anything like that. So when I got this, I wanted to see what they did with it and there is a twist and I was shocked by the twist. So I don't know what they're going to do for Legend of Zelda 2, but definitely play this. If you played Breath of the Wild, and you've not played this, you need to play this. Definitely try this out because you'll see something you go, what the hell again, Nintendo? <laughs> the fourth game that I beat in January was She Sees Red. It is a narrative-based game where you have multiple things you do, decide something, and it could end up bad, could end up good, could end up in the middle. But you have multiple ways that stuff could happen. I liked it, I really did. And for what it's worth, it's the price is great for this story. It's not very long. It's a couple hours of gameplay, but I had a blast playing this. And I will say though, it's not meant for kids. Um, there is some nudity in this game, which I didn't know about. And so thankfully I didn't stream it and find out the hard way, but yeah, definitely try this out for sure. It's worth a worth five, 10 bucks, whatever it's that going out for right now. Next game that I beat was Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. I played through this uh, a few, I played like a few hours on stream and then I played the rest offline and I really enjoyed this game. I will say the last level kicked my butt. It really took me, oh, I've, I lost count, but it was definitely close to a hundred times I died because there's a sequence you have to get down and master. And if I didn't get that, I, I was raging. I really was raging at that point, but I loved it because it gave me a challenge. It wasn't like, Oh, you play and you're done. I, I really do respect that they kept the, the game mechanics somewhat the same, but they did change up a lot of this stuff. So I can see why a lot of people hated it because at the end, if you weren't playing and you didn't get it, you wouldn't beat the game. And that's the last level of the damn game. <laughs> like, what the hell? I always say that, but definitely worth a playthrough. Definitely give it a try. I, I respect what they did. And they didn't they didn't veer too much onto the other side of the road, so you get it it got it got a good high score for me. It was like nine out of ten. And the last game that I beat in January was Tekken 3. I played through with Jin. I played the story again because I had my PlayStation Mini just sitting there and I was like, hmm, let me play it. Let me get whatever is available to play. And I forgot that Tekken 3 was on there. That was one of the main reasons why I picked it up uh, day one. I, I was like, I wanted to play Tekken 3 again because it was stolen out of my game collections. And that's my favorite, like one of my favorite fighting franchises. 
So I had to give it a try again and thankfully it doesn't have bad lag. It's good. I got a wireless controller from the mini. I slapped it in there and had a blast. And so definitely try it out for, for anybody who's never played Tekken 3. Give Jin a, a, you know what? Even if you don't play Jin, play one of the original characters, uh, Heiachi. Give him a try. They all have the same style, a little bit different, but yeah, man. For February, the first game that I beat was Doodle World. Uh, this is a homebrew. The daughter drew the little characters and the dad made the animations for the game. I liked it. I'm glad I did the Kickstarter. I really liked the game. It was cute, uh, short, but if you can find it online for the ROM, I would definitely try it out. The second game that I beat was Spider-Man for the PS4. It's a classic story. You know the story if you've read any of the comics or watched any of the shows, but I do like how they played it out for everybody. So this universe is definitely worth a try if you ever can get this game, and I know it's going cheap right now. The next game I beat was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. Classic game. I've beaten this several times in my lifetime, but I haven't beaten it in a while and I wanted to play it on stream and I really did enjoy it. So it's, it's a fun classic time. Definitely try it out if you can. The next game on the list was Indigo Prophecy for the PS4. I know I do have the variant called Fahrenheit, but it is called Indigo Prophecy in the US. But I did enjoy the story. Um, I never played this game when they said that they were going to release it for physical copy. I was looking around for a while for the PS2 version and the price was ridiculous so I wasn't going to pay that. And when I heard this I was like, okay, I'll snag it up for like, I think it was 40 bucks. And I got a bad ending. <laughs> if you uh, play the game and you don't get some of the stuff in time, then you get a bad ending. And I, the, my characters didn't die but the world wasn't great so, oh well, c'est la vie. The last game that I beat was Final Fight 3 for the Super Nintendo. I had streamed this game, it was on my list, and I got it recommended, and I beat it first try. I didn't even think I was going to do that. I really was struggling with about the boss at the very end, and I got it, and I was having fun. I enjoy it. Final Fight is a good franchise and definitely always a playthrough for me. I think I've played it a lot, but I never played Final 3. Final Fight 3 was one of the games where I was surprised. I was like, oh, I never really did play that one. and. If nobody had recommended it, I don't think it would ever have been on my list. Now for March, the first game I beat was God of War for the PS4. T-Belly will be proud of me. Um, I played through this game and I had a blast. I had fun. Um, I've played the old God of War games and didn't know if I would really like the fight style. And I did. I enjoyed the story. When I got to the very end and you're walking and you see the credits rolling, I like that that little nice niche that not every developer does, which they should do, which is, if you're gonna give me credits, give me something to do while I'm watching the credits, and they did that and I enjoyed it. The second game in March that I beat was a sad disappointment, and that was Agents of Mayhem. I love Saints Row and I wanted to give Volition another try and when I saw this I said okay let me pick it up but they didn't tell me that they were gonna make a still book for every region but the US and that even made me more mad so when I picked this up I picked it up for cheap and when I played it I was very disappointed all the Saints Row games start off with action even the first one e you're about to get shot and somebody helps you so you don't know what to do this one, you're skating around for a while and you're bored out of your mind, so don't play this. Sad. Sad face. The third game that I played was Double Dragon for the Neo Geo. I never heard about this game ever in my life, and when I found out that it was on the Neo Geo, I found it, and I found out it was a fighter, so it was even more cool. So when I played it, I enjoyed it. I will say, though, um... It's, it's different, a different fighter, like the, the bosses were intriguing and that's not bad, I liked it. And I liked the background, the background was the best. You had the movie in the background playing for Double Dragon and that was the seal of the deal. That's what I say, it's definitely a good game for sure. And the last game that I beat for this month was Horizon Zero Dawn. I had never really 
thought about playing this game and then Bandana Gamer sent me this game and I was like, heck yeah, I'll try it out. So I didn't think this story was going to be that great because I saw somebody stream it and it really, sadly, it was kind of boring to me to watch it be streamed. This game is not meant to be streamed in my opinion and that's because there's so much tedious stuff to do. When you have to grind so much and get all these stuff, it's better just to do the main story and not do the side missions or the side stuff. And I, that's why I said to myself, I was like, I'm not going to stream it, but I did play it and I really do enjoy it now that I actually got to play it for myself. So I gave it a second chance and I'm glad I did. April was a short month. There was only two games that I beat and that was Uncharted, the very first game. I played through this. I really did enjoy it. I finally gave it a, a go because um, I wanted to play the fourth one. I never played the fourth one and I forgot most of the story so I wanted to play through the whole game system again. So I cycled through and I played the first one in this month and it's a great story. Jumping mechanics are a little off. It made me frustrated but it's not bad. And the second game that I beat was NCIS 3D. It's not bad. It's not good. It's okay. <laughs> it's just a game that it's based off a TV show. It's not as bad as CSI, but it's just, eh, you're gonna toss it away after you're done. Now we're in May, and the very first game that I beat in May was Bible Buffet. Um, I don't think I ever really played Bible Buffet. I will say if you ever do play the game, you need the manual. You gotta find it online, because the questions are in the manual. I don't know why the game developer did that, because if you don't have the manual, you're not going to know. And if you guess, you're going to be completely wrong and you're not going to make it through the game. It's one of those games where the more you fail, the farther you go back. It's basically a board game. <sighs> so, yeah, definitely get the manual for sure. The second game that I beat was Max Payne 3. I have played through Max Payne 1 and 2, and I forgot that I never beat this. I started playing it. I don't know why I put it down. I must have been playing some other game and when I got back to this, I really enjoyed it. It's not like the other games. Um, there's a little bit of change. It's not much. It's only subtle if you play through the first two and then you realize. And I like the story. I like where they went with it. They went darker than, which is kind of weird that they can go darker than the other two, but they went darker and I enjoyed it. It's a classic. I love Max Payne, the franchise, and I'm glad I played this finally. Next game that I beat was DuckTales Remastered. I never played this game. I saw a couple of people talk about how they changed it and yeah, they changed it. They got rid of some shortcuts. Um, I don't know why they did that, but it's the same game literally. If you know where you're going, you're gonna be okay. It's not that bad of big of a deal to me, but I enjoyed it. I like the soundtrack and I'm glad I got a physical copy before they got rid of everything and just went digital only. So. Definitely give this one a try for sure. Now the next game that I played was Resident Evil Director's Cut and that was because I saw everybody playing Resident Evil 8 and I wanted to play Village but sadly I don't have a system to play it so I kind of waited on that and I was debating about getting, you know, if I was going to get on Xbox or PlayStation. I finally picked it up on PlayStation because I couldn't wait anymore but I still haven't played it yet. <laughs> but I enjoyed this game. It's a classic. I love the story. I love, you know, all the puzzles and everything like that. It's not a very long game once you figure out how to play. It's like four or five hours if you know where you're going. I did play this um, about in April or March and I rage quit. I will not lie because I got to the boulder and I forgot to save. I didn't bring a, r a ribbon with me. I was like, oh, I'm good. I got this. And then the... The tank controls and messed up. <laughs> I just, I said, screw it. I'm going to come back later. And I'm glad I did. I went back and played it and finished it. So I, I love Resident Evil games. Right after playing Resident Evil Director's Cut, I decided to play the last game that I never played. And that's Resident Evil 6. I know a lot of people hate this game. And I can see why. It's very linear. It's not fun playing solo. Um... It's basically just a guided tour on a, on a movie franchise kind of thing. It's like you're watching the story unfold and you just have like a lot of quick time events. So if you want to play the story, I definitely recommend Leon's or Chris Redfield's. The other story really didn't intrigue me that much. I played Leon's and enjoyed it. And there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, mm, okay. So 
I played it. It's now off my list as a backlog, and I probably will never play it again unless I get a buddy to play with me. For June, uh, the very first game that I ever played in that month was Tell Me Why for the PC. I wanted to play the game, and again, sadly, I didn't have the Xbox at the time, so I decided to wait until it was on PC. And they were actually doing a giveaway where it was like free, just go ahead and play it. And so I played the first chapter, and then when in June they said the rest was free, I snagged it up and I played all the way through. I even played the whole thing. I, uh, I, I don't know what they call it on Steam, but I know it's like uh, getting the Platinum Trophy for PS4. And so when I played it all the way through, it was it's a sad story. It's very sad. It's it's a one and play kind of thing. Like I'm done playing it after this. I played it all the way through to see everything on all the story ends and how it could end for everything. But I probably won't play it again. I'll just wait for another game from them. The second game that I played on the list was The Last Kids on Earth and the Staff of Doom. Um, I found this show through Netflix and I didn't even know it existed and I went and found the books and read the books and I enjoyed the story. It's literally, there's a bunch of kids and it's the end of the world and they have to survive and so you find out that there's like a parallel like portal that keeps bringing in monsters and you have to stop the main monster from coming in and bringing really bad havoc of craziness. So. You have a staff of doom you have to find and you have to do it's a bunch of missions and different things like that and it's kind of like comic book style where you see the scenes played out in comic book fashion but the main play is is top down view a little bit it's like a beat em up and i really did enjoy this i like this uh it's very short though don't pay full price for it find it on cheap if you can and i was on a horror fix for the third game that i beat and that was left for dead 2 for the xbox 360. I love this game. I love the campaign. I could play this a hundred times. I'm sad that I can't play it online because I don't have Xbox Live or a way to connect it to the internet. But it's okay. I'm cool with that. I'm fine with that. But I definitely enjoy this game, no matter if I have to play solo. And because I realized I had played Tekken 3 and didn't finish Tekken 6 on all the characters, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna play Jin again. I went and played Jin again and I got a beat on this one. I finished all the way through. And I kinda don't like Tekken 6. It's got this weird like story playthrough based style where it's like um, kind of like an arcade beat em up where they're trying to play and they just need to stick with their style. It doesn't work for this franchise and that's just my opinion. Like if they just stick with what they know they'll be good on that one. The next game that I beat was Call of Duty Black Ops. I was sad when I went to pull out Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and I forgot that they don't have a campaign on there and I went straight to this game and played it because screw that, you need a campaign. Put a campaign on every game. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's World of Warcraft, whatever you're going to call the next Call of Duty, put it on there, please. And the last game that I beat for this month was the second Uncharted game. Uncharted 2 Among Thieves and I enjoyed the second story. I kind of forgot the second story more than the first one but it still was fun to play again and I kind of like it was playing it brand new for the first time in my opinion like you play a game that you haven't played in years. This has been good what over five six years now since I've played it and it was brand new fresh to me and I enjoyed that. July was another short month. I only beat two games in July and the very first game was Prototype for the Xbox 360. I played the second one a long time ago and I didn't really get into the game so I kind of want to give the franchise a give like you know another shot kind of thing and I didn't want to pick up the collection from GameStop for the PS4 but I saw this game was cheap, so I picked it up, and I'm glad I did. I, I like the first game better than the second game, and it's kind of like Watch Dogs a little bit, so I kind of get the, the feel, and it's better than Watch Dogs, the first one, for sure, in my opinion. So I like the story. It was a great game. I definitely am glad I picked it up and decided to take it off my checklist for the backlog. And the last game that I beat was... Xena Warrior Princess, The Talisman of Fate. Um, I never saw this game, never played it, and 
I even forgot about it. And then when Dizzy gave me the N64 and this was on the ROM list, I decided to try it out. And I liked it so much that I grabbed the cart and I'm going to be playing this a lot. <laughs> I really did enjoy it. So it's one of those games that probably going to be, I play through it at least once a year for a while until I get tired of it, which sadly I hope I never get tired of this, but it's definitely worth a game that you can play through. It's a fighter and I was so shocked that they picked fighter, but I liked it. So the first game that I beat in August was the third and final for the collection that was Uncharted 3. Drake's Deception. Um, I played through this and again, the jumping mechanics are off. I don't know why. And it was a little frustrating for me, but it wasn't too bad to where I hated the game. But yeah, it's definitely worth the playthrough to play all three of them. I didn't play them back to back, but I did enjoy playing through all the first three. And now I'm ready to tackle the fourth one. The second game that I beat was Super Fighter Puzzle 2 Turbo for the PSP. This is a collection of Capcom Puzzle World. And I played as Chung Lee. And uh, if you play the easy mode, you don't get an ending at all. It literally just stops. And then if you play normal, you get an ending. So I really don't like that about that, but it's how the developers are gonna do. And every time they do that, I, it, it annoys me. Cause some people can't play easy and are, are not that skilled. Give them a little bit of chance, but at least give them some of an ending. Like, don't just say, oh, you're done, here. And you don't even get to fight the final boss. It really irritates me when they do that. And I get it, I understand you want somebody to play the normal mode, but Street Fighter's always done that. The, for Since the beginning of time, when I first started playing Street Fighter, it did the same thing. It didn't give me an ending. It said congratulations and move on. And when I beat it for the first time, like a long time ago, and actually got an ending, I was super stoked, but it still was sad to see this. The third game that I beat was Neo Geo Battle Coliseum for the PS2. This is a good game. I liked it. It's kind of like Tekken Tag, where you get two fighters, whoever you want to play as, and you battle through, and you go all the way to the end. And I enjoyed it. I liked it. I liked the fight style. Um, the one thing I will say is pick a fighter that has a sword, because they have a lot more range and if not pick a fighter that has something to throw at somebody because otherwise you're gonna get your your uh, ass handed to you for sure the next game that I beat was Soul Calibur 3 I played as Cassandra and I really enjoy Soul Calibur I hadn't played this in a long time so I wanted to pick it up again play it and I enjoy this I it's always a fighter that I go back to I love it I, I can play all of them, and I don't have any qualms about it. It's a good fighter. I like that every single fighter has a weapon, and there's some that have range, but they're slow, and some of them that are fast, but they have a short dagger or a short sword, so definitely try this out if you never try Soul Calibur. The next game that I played was Virtual Fighter Animation. This has been in my backlog for a long time, and I forgot it was in my backlog, and the reason why is... I usually just play it, put it down, and move on because it's a fighter. And I never really played through fighters that were on handheld mode because 9 times out of 10, they just really aren't the same as the other ones in their console, you know, whatever predecessor they are porting from. And this was actually really good. I liked it. It's basically you are multiple different characters and you have to play through them. And then if the one character dies, you get the next character. And that's how many continues you have, is how many fighters you get is how many continues you have. So there's not really one fighter you get to pick. You can just play through all of them and hope for the best, but at least learn one of them and fight really well with that. And if you know that fighter, you'll be okay. And the last game for this month was Climate Trail. Uh, this is an Oregon-based game where you literally play It's a Modern Age and the end of the world again where you are seeing that the climate has gone so bad that there's so many fires in the world that you want to go to a better area, and that's Canada. <laughs> so you have to make the trek north to Canada, and you go from California to Canada, and you were somewhat uh, with a band of people. You don't really get to pick names. You just pick your name, and that's it. And then you have like a group, of, I think, of like four and you gotta make them all the way through. And if it rains, collect rain. That's all I gotta recommend for you. Maybe if I hadn't given stuff to people, uh, maybe I would've had a harder time. I don't know, but it was it was an okay game. I liked it. It was definitely worth a try. It's free. Can't beat free. 
For September, the first game that I played was Fatal Fury F Contact for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. I played as Joe. Um, this one was actually pretty fun. I never really played a Neo Geo Pocket Color game other than I just played, I think it was like a couple of the baseball games I had. I I only had the Neo Geo Pocket Color for a little bit and then I just sold it because all the games were either A, very expensive to keep. Uh, I would have burned through my wallet really fast. So it was actually fun to have it now that I can play it on my emulator. The second game that I beat was Mortal Kombat for the Sega CD. I never really got to play this version and when I saw it was on the list of games that I could play, I put it on and I started playing it. And I will say it does glitch for this version at the very end. Um, I only had one continue left after getting my butt handed to me with a bunch of, of the, like, the two fighter ones. And I finally got to the end and I was like super stressed out. And then when I saw it was glitching, I was like, oh crap. Every time he changed to another character, I saw like it skip and it and sometimes it even froze for a good minute. And then once it finally collected itself, I didn't even realize if the input went through and I was just stressing out the whole time. So yeah, if you want a stressor, go for the Sega CD version. The third game on the list was a racer I never even heard of and I was just going through the Game Boy Advance game list and I saw it and I was like I'm gonna try it out and it's Banjo Pilot. I played it and actually it's really fun. You race four races and then when you get to the very end you have to face off against a boss and the bosses could be any style of fighting that they want. It's usually where you have to um, kind of like a uh, gorilla styled face off against the other boss and, and whoever makes it through the end, you have to like literally hit them more than the other person hits you. And I liked it. I enjoyed that. It was a good racer. I've never played a racer with the actual planes before. And I liked how they switched it up and it wasn't just a clone of another game that I've already played. So they got a win on that one. The next game on the list was World Heroes Anthology. I played the very first World Heroes and I played as Dragon. And I enjoyed it. Um, I like this fighting. This this is hilariously goofy. There's some characters with some weird fighting styles and I like it. I enjoy it. It's it's a fighter that never got old. I used to love playing this when it was back in the day and I just throw it on. I would play it for however long I could play it and then I'd switch off to another fighter. But this has a place in my heart. I remember the animations. The first time seeing the big old hands coming at me, I was like, what the hell is that? But it was fun. I enjoyed it. The next game on the list was A Normal Lost Phone for the PC. Uh, I saw that they had a bundle. Uh, it was kind of like buy the collection pack and you get it for like five bucks. It was on sale and I'm glad I picked it up. It's basically a puzzle game where you find somebody's phone and you have to go through it. And if you know how to work a phone, you know how to work these puzzles. You literally just find passwords and Wi-Fi passwords will lead you to other stuff. and. I'm not going to spoil the story because it, literally if I talk anything about the story, you're going to know how it ends. So you just find a person's phone and you have to find out what the story is about. So yeah, find it. It's super cheap right now. The next game on the list was Another Lost Phone Laura Story. This was the second game in the bundle and again, it's you find a lost phone, you don't know whose it is, and you have to go through and unlock it and get through the phone. Again, I can't say anything about the story because I will spoil any part of the story, but it's worth a play. Definitely pick up this bundle, definitely give it a try. And I will say it's not lighthearted stories. These are stories that will make you pull at the heartstrings and go, damn. The seventh game that I played was Life is Strange True Colors. I really enjoyed this game. It was a fun play. Um, I had a blast playing it. I, I will say that it was a good story. Um, I will say it's kind of cheesy. There are some points where you're like, really? And there was some funny glitches. Uh, what color is this was my favorite glitch. I, She T-posed a couple times and I just didn't know what to make of it. And I thought it was just my PlayStation Slim. But found out it was more than just a PlayStation Slim. It was literally even some PS5s that saw them doing it. So. Fun times, definitely try it out. And if there's a patch, oh well. It was fun while it lasted. 
The last game for this month was Song of the Deep. I enjoyed it. I streamed it all the way through. I will say some of the puzzles are frustrating. I don't know why they make some of the puzzles super elaborate and then other puzzles literally just shoot something and you get through and find it, but it's not for everybody. I can see why a lot of people don't like to play this game, but I enjoyed it. I had a good time with this and streaming it, so it's a really good story. Definitely try it out for sure. For October, the very first game that I played was Colot. Um, it's supposed to be scary. It really didn't scare me. It made me laugh a couple times, but I do get the fear factor if you are scared of anything with the forest or anything to do with climbing or getting lost or, you know, anything to do with like jump scares. This will scare you, but it is a good game. I just hope that if you do play it, you pick up on the the map and the little like, there's a little section of the corner where you have to know longitude, latitude, and if you figure that out, you'll know this game back and forth. Like, it won't be that hard. It, for me, it took me a minute to figure it out. I was just literally walking around aimlessly. The first one gives you, like, a, easy to find, but the second and third and the rest of them are, like, you just have to stumble upon them or you have to know where you're going. The second game that I beat was more... It basically is a PC game where it's got decent graphics and it's a really creepy story of you're going in and you see spirits and then you find a Ouija board and you talk to them through that and yeah, it's a creepy house and I'm not gonna spoil it too much but you better be ready for the scares for sure. The game that I beat was Typing of the Dead uh, for the arcade. It's basically a Dreamcast put inside of an arcade machine, and it was really funny to finally play it. Um, it's literally House of the Dead 2, if you ever played House of the Dead 2, but more, 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 I emphasize more scary because you don't have a gun and you can't shoot, you have to type. I'm dyslexic. It was a very hard game to play because my B's, Q's, P's and D's are mixed up and jumbled in my head sometimes, so that was not fun. It was, you, I kid you not, there's one monster that everything's in English and then all of a sudden you see they ask questions in Japanese. So if you don't speak Japanese or you don't read Japanese, you're going to be screwed. Thankfully I got endless credits, otherwise I would have had a hard time. And then the final boss is it was such a long line of just gibberish. I'm like, what in the world are they thinking? And I was so stressed out. I don't know how I beat that game, but <laughs> I had fun to, I, I would I would not, no, I'm not gonna stream it and I won't play it again, but I had a fun time finally playing it. The next game on the list was Night of the Lesbian and Vampires. It's a story-based game. You pick and choose what you want to happen. There's a butterfly effect. And it's on the Android iOS. Uh, I don't know if it's on Apple, but um, I definitely found it on Android. And I liked it. It was a good story. It's short. It's sweet. Uh, the voice actors were really good. I liked the voice actors for this and they were spot on with their their uh, scenes that they picked for them. And yeah, definitely give it a try. It's I think it's free right now. The fifth game that I played was Primal Rage for the Game Gear. I played a lot of the Primal Rage games. I played in the arcade. I've played it, I think, on every console you can think of. And I forgot that I didn't play it on the game, the Game Gear for some reason. I had a bunch of fighters that I would just play them for a few minutes and put it down. But I was like, you know what? I beat the first one. Let me play the second game that I had on my list for fighters. And I played through that one and I finally beat it. So I, was, I enjoyed it. It's another game off my backlog and I had a blast with it. It's a fun fighter for sure. You definitely got to try it out. The next game on the list is for PS4 and that is called Lydia. Uh, it's a very sad tale. I streamed it on my channel and basically it's a girl who her real life is so bad that she makes it into monsters. Uh, her family, her life, her house is not stable. Uh, she's raised by parents that are not fit to be parents and she sees monsters to make them and like her imagination takes over. So it's very sad. It was a tale that it's not for the faint of heart, for sure. 
The next game was also on the PS4 and that's Oregon Trail. Not Oregon like the state, but Oregon, like your organs in your body. The complete edition. And I played what I, I streamed for like a couple hours and I let everybody take the reins and then you know I was like finally I'm gonna play it but at the time I was in a lot of pain this is, was right after my uh, car accident and sadly the characters they pissed me off I just named them like random names I named them like Simba, Nemo, I didn't care they were pissing me off I literally just like whoop you're done you're done I don't care like I didn't even give a crap about them I kept like one character and myself alive and I was like, I'm not in the mood for them. <laughs> there was like three that annoyed me and I was like, bye, say la vie, get out of here. And I just, I played the game all the way through. And I like the very end. It's it's a cool ending. Um, You don't just like end up getting there. You have to work for it. You have like, you like, I thought, oh, I'm here. I finally made it. And then it's like, fix this. I'm like, are you kidding me? But I played through it and I enjoyed it. So definitely give it a try. It's not bad of a price and... I don't care that I don't have a physical. It's one of those games that I don't mind. I, I just play it for fun and when next Halloween happens, we'll play it again. The last game on the list was House of Ashes for the PS4. I enjoyed this. This was my favorite so far out of all of the games that have released. I really didn't like Man of Median. Little Hope, I loved it until the very end and this was my favorite. It's literally vampire alien things that are attacking you and this was a good game I loved it I loved the voice acting I loved the actors that were playing the characters and I loved the way it could end it could end badly you could have all of them die or you could have everybody live so I like that you don't have it hand holding but you also have it to where it's not gonna kick your ass it's not gonna take you away but I liked it for November, the very first game that I beat was King of Kings, the early years. <laughs> I had a lot of people ask me, why did you beat this? And it's like, it was in my backlog, literally. I I played Sunday Fun Day, I've played all the other ones except for King of Kings and Bible Buffet. And those were the only two that I never played because for some weird reason I couldn't find them. I don't know because maybe because all my friends had them or whatever, but I never played it, so I wanted to play through it just to see what it was all about. And I have it. I have it on my... Like, I can play it multiple ways. I can play it on my emulation and I can play it on my clone console. So I threw it in. I played it. It was funny. Literally, it's just the questions. And they are the same over and over again. Unlike Bubba Buffet, you just guess. Once you figure out the answer, just keep playing it. It'll be the same 5-10 questions. Not that hard. The second game that I beat for this month was Super Mario Land. I haven't played this game in a long time and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try again. And the lag hit my butt. The lag was bad. I thankfully figured out the lag and once I figured out the lag and the timing, I was back in action. I had fun. I We'll say for those who have a hard time beating the final boss, literally just move your guy to where the power symbol is and you should be okay for the first part. Um, kind of like move him around and like go back and forth and just kind of stay up in the top corner and just like in a circle motion move around and then when he finally is done with the first phase, the second phase, again, go back to the, the power symbol and just stay there and just kind of move your guy up and down because that's literally, it's, it's just, they, they spread out. Save your guys, um, your hits. Try to not get hit the very first phase. I know it's hard, but if you can avoid getting hit the first phase, that'll help you out a little bit more for the second phase and you're good to go. And the last game that I beat for this month was the voice of cards the Isle of Dragon Roars is for the PS4 and I think the Xbox and PC. This was a digital only game and it literally was not on my radar but then I saw a trailer and I was like, heck yeah, I like the format. It was cards, get a bunch of cards, you get dice and you have everything right in front of you. I love RPGs but I just... it. I have a hard time memorizing everybody's fighting style, everybody's what they can and can't do. And so when I can see it right in front of me, I know exactly what I can choose, how many gems I need to, to generate to get it, I'm good to go. 
And I will say you need to grind. Don't go to the final boss. Like the final boss is just bad. So grind. I grinded for three, four hours on getting the little minions killed over and over again. And then um, the one good thing I like about it is you can go through and just like find random little minions to kill and you're good and then you can level up. Once you level up, attack the outside first and then the end. Once you see the end boss, you'll know what I'm talking about. So it was fun. I enjoyed it. I liked the game and I'm glad I picked it up. It wasn't like full price. It was actually like I think 40 bucks and $40 well spent for sure. Now we're at the final month and the very first game that I beat was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I played last year the remaster and for some odd reason I just decided this month that I was just going to snag it up and play it again. And so I kind of memorized everything. It's not that difficult for me to like go through the levels. The only weird thing that happened, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but the camera would get fixed on the ground. So I would, I would, I don't know if it's just because I got overpowered and by the end I was too fast for the camera and it would just get stuck on the ground and I would just see whatever the color of the ground was. So if, if I was on a ramp, it was like a beige or, or if it was on a metal ramp or the ground, it was gray. And then after a while it got frustrating because I'm like, I'm trying to beat the tournament, the final tournament, and it just wouldn't stop doing it. And when it finally stopped doing it and I won, I was like, dude, I'm so done. <laughs> I'm so done. I'm out. And then it froze. <laughs> and I didn't even get the final credits. I was like, are you kidding me? It got, I did like, it like scrolled up for like five seconds and then I was done. I was like, darn. <laughs> oh, well, I had a fun time. I, uh, I, I love the soundtrack. I love the game. It's just all around. I can play it over and over again. The second game I beat on this month was Saints Row, the very first one for the Xbox 360. I have the dual pack and I want to get ready for the new Saints Row game, so I started off with the very first Saints Row. Um, it's a fun game. I like it. I don't have anything bad to say about it. I love the first game, but sadly I don't like the second game. Once I found out what Volition did to the storyline and Julian and all that stuff, so... I probably will skip the second one and go to the third one next, um, probably do that, and so we'll see what happens, but yep, that is a good time. Play Saints Row if you haven't played the first one. And the last game that I beat for the year was Paperboy for the N64. Never truly played this game at all. I never had an N64, and I stopped playing Paperboy after the NES and the Game Boy version, the very first one. I kind of just was done. I was like, it's Paperboy. What's different about it? And I will say I had fun. I enjoyed it. I liked it. Um, I will say again, I hope that developers will stop doing this where if you play on easy mode, you don't get an ending at all. You literally just get like, uh, congratulations, you're done. Now play it on hard. Now play it on normal. Now play it on this because let's face it, not everybody's going to want to go back to your game and play it again. Stop doing that. Well, there you have it, everybody. Those are all the games that I beat. I beat three more than last year, and that's 58 games. I had a fun time. I always love doing this, reminiscing about what I did last year. And I'll do it again for 2021. Um, let me know. If you didn't make a video and I didn't see it, what was your number? How many games did you beat? And if you don't, remember what were the highlights of your year for the past year and I hope you have a safe blessed this 2022 and yeah write down your game list keep it see what happens it's a fun time for sure so that is it I can throw this paper away and call it a day so keep on gaming and I'll catch you next video bye everybody Linda the Gamer Girl She's here, she's playing games Linda the Gamer Girl She's here, she's playing games